Ready to discover new music? Midwest Music Fest is heading back to lacrosse at six indoor venues, all located right downtown on November 3rd and 4th. With over 60 bands, you're sure to discover new music you'll love. Tickets are on sale now at midwestmusicfest.org. Prevention is the key to a healthy life. That's why Gunderson Health encourages you to learn about vaccines and how they can help you and your loved ones stay healthy. Vaccines protect against preventable diseases and viruses by boosting your body's defenses. Visit GundersonHealthFacts.com to learn more. The Sandbars Storytelling Festival promotes the art of storytelling for all ages. Enjoy exciting performances throughout this three-day festival, October 12th through the 14th in Winona, Minnesota. Find out why the returning headliner, Bill Lepp, is back by popular demand. Get your tickets at sandbarstorytellingfestival.org. We had a conversation with the team at the United Fund for the Arts and Humanities, UFA, during which we delved into the organization's history, its significant role within lacrosse, its various programs, fundraising efforts, and ways for individuals to stay updated on their activities. You can find more conversations on our website, lacrosselocal.com. I'm Amy. And I'm Brent. And this is Lacrosse Local. We chatted way back with both of you, different capacities, episodes 44 and 93, but we're here to talk about the United Fund for the Arts and Humanities. What are your roles? I feel like that's a, a lot of people's experience with you. They come to it and are like, what is this organization? It's involved in the arts, but we're not exactly sure how or why. We were reached out to kind of around this time last year, maybe a little later in the fall, to see if we would, based on our past experience in arts organizations in the community, uh, lead up the campaign, uh, the fundraising campaign for this year. So we're uh, kind of the figureheads, I guess, of uh, reaching out and talking to folks like yourself about what is UFA, the United Fund for the Arts and Humanities, and uh, trying to raise money in uh, that capacity to support uh, 12 local arts organizations. Yes, yeah, so it, it is an umbrella organization. It started back in 1983. And basically what UFA does is it's kind of like the United Way, except it's for local arts and humanities organizations. So they spend all year raising funds and then they distribute it to their member groups. And as of this year, right now, there's 12. It's changed over the 40 years how many member groups they've had. But for the last few years, it's been 12. So, I mean, just looking at the, the website, too, it's like since 1983, they've raised over $4 million. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say another thing that's really impressive about UFA is of that over, you know, $4 million, 92% of it went directly to yeah. the organization. So they have a really high return rate. Your donation counts for a lot. <laughs> I know you guys just kind of jumped on here in the last year. Did it start out with all some of these organizations? I mean, have been around for a long time, from the Symphony Orchestra to the Pump House. Was there a key group of people that just thought this was there was a good reason for this organization, or do you have that history? I, I feel like when you have an arts, I mean, I, I don't know if this is the the case with how UFA got started, but we've had the Symphony celebrating 125 years wow. this year. Uh, lacrosse Community Theater, for instance, is 60, 60. This, their oh. 60th season this year. So uh, I feel like back in 1983, you probably saw some of these organizations were in this area and, and needing that uh, additional support somehow. There's a group of people that came together to say, hey, we've got these great groups. How can we provide another way to support them all and to keep them all in this this area that is is so fantastic and grow the arts in our community. Yeah, because I think something to keep in mind, too, with many of these organizations is, yes, there's the entertainment aspect of it, which there is mm -hmm. a lot of work that goes behind the scenes when you're trying to put on a show or a concert. But a lot of them also have an education component, which takes a lot of time and energy and ticket sales, classes, the funds that you get from those programming, in some cases, it doesn't even cover 50% of their costs. So much more that they have to focus on is actually fundraising, uh, applying to foundations, to organizations for sponsorships, federal grants. It's a lot of work. So to have 
UFA yeah. be able to take some of that pressure off of them and do some of that fundraising on their behalf. It's just, it's a huge weight lifted off the shoulders of these organizations so they can focus mm -hmm. on their education programming, on just what they offer day to day. And it's also part of what helps them keep their programming accessible. There's a lot of them that offer sponsorships like the, the Youth Symphony. They try to keep the cost of tickets low. So it's, UFA does a lot to just make it more manageable yeah. for these organizations. It seems like it's an advocate for local groups in terms of getting people to participate from volunteering with the Hyder Center for the Arts is on here. They have the boy choir, the girl choir, the historical society, just like a lot of resources for people to just get involved in the arts as well. Yeah, that's uh, something that maybe you are interested in one of the groups and you go to UFA's page or, or look into the donation aspect and then you look at the, the list of member groups and say, oh, I didn't know. We're also supporting the Mississippi Valley Archaeology Center and learning more about our local history by supporting UFA. So that's that's one thing that I've found really interesting about it is that UFA kind of serves in a way as a gateway to learning more about the local arts and humanities groups that we have in this area. So have you seen recently or even though it's last year, like what is kind of the impact do you feel this organization is bringing to the arts and lacrosse? You guys sent out a little release about just even like the local economy with tourism, with people traveling for it. The impact for this year or just in the past years? I may have asked too many questions. In <laughs> well, I mean, because I, like, I can speak, I was, I was working at a l arts organization during COVID, for instance. Yeah. And even that year, as a, a member organization, I was still able to apply for a sponsorship from UFA. And it was probably one of the biggest sponsorships that we got that year mm -hmm. and one that remained consistent because COVID affected everybody. So not all organizations were able to give in a way that they had in years past. I mean, they were figuring things out, too. So just to have that support was was huge. And I am I'm grateful for that. Yeah. In terms of the economic impact of, of supporting the arts in our area, you think about it, if somebody's, especially coming from out of town, but even if they live in this area, you know, a, a night out at a, a concert or a theater is not just the ticket price. It's not just that organization. I mean, you think that they're, if they're coming from out of town or have family coming from out of town to see this, they're going to be staying at a hotel likely, or, you know, visiting shops in the area or going out to, they're going to make it a night out. It's going to be a night at a restaurant. So you're going to see the, the kind of ripple effect that way. But also we had a unique experience last fall with one of the member organizations giving back to another organization. Oh, yeah. So the Girl Choir is one of the member groups. And I am also involved with the Family and Children's Center. And they were having their Bridges to Better Tomorrows event at the Weber Center, another of the 12 <laughs> organization yeah. groups. But so they just, they wanted to have a moment in the programming, the Family and Children's Center, that is, that would just kind of stand out and touch the members of the audience. And so I, I reached out to the girl choir and just asked if they would be willing to perform a song. And graciously, they agreed to do this. And it was right at the end of the program. And with the the song selection, it just, it did such a good job of tying into the the message of the Family and Children's Center. And there were so many people crying. There were people <laughs> that like months afterwards, when they were talking to Family and Children Center about completely different things, they would bring it up on just how good that performance was. And they, they had a very successful fundraiser. I mean, I was touched. We made a donation that night. So it's just so cool to see these these arts organizations that also give back to their community. So it just I feel like it goes full circle. Yeah, it full circle and very very interconnected, which I feel like is how a lot of the organizations in our community operate. So speaking of that, you guys are doing some fundraising. I believe your goal is one hundred and forty thousand, and you guys just announced an update on that. Uh, yeah, it's it's a fun uh, effort this year because, uh, as you mentioned. 
40 years of UFA, uh, more than $4 million raised. So we we decided to up the goal to try and get with that four theme to 140,000 this year. So we're calling on the community for a little more support <laughs> and can definitely use use some help to, to get to that mark. Again, supporting not only arts organizations, not only performance groups, but like we mentioned, the Historical Society, the the Archaeology Center. So a, a lot of different aspects of our community that involve entertainment and education, which is so fantastic. So it's our Cheers to 40 Years and $4 million raised campaign uh, this year. So basically, let's just list them all off here. Maybe I'll forget one. Cooley Korsman, Great River Festival of the Arts, Hyder Center for the Arts, the Cross Area Youth Symphony Orchestra, Cross Boys Choir, La Crosse Chamber, Coral, La Crosse Community Theater, La Crosse County Historical Society, La Crosse Girl Choir, La Crosse Symphony Orchestra, Mississippi Valley Archaeological Center, and the Pump House Regional Arts Center. Is that yeah. it? Got them all. <laughs> <laughs> we were trying to go through them just as just before we started talking. Like, do we know all of them offhand in case you yeah. asked us? But I'm glad you had it there. So, you know, if people want to get involved, you know, it looks like people in any amount can get involved with donation. Where do they go? What do they do? What can they expect from, you know, participating in this? Well, and that's what I wanted to say, too. It doesn't matter. You know, we're, we're uh, hope, hoping for some some big donors, obviously. But it, like you said, any amount will do. If you want to give $12 to support <laughs> each of the 12 member groups, that's great. If you want to give $40 to support 40 years of you any contribution adds up and helps us get to that total again of supporting the arts and you can do so by going to ufah.org lacrosse local podcast is a production of river travel media do you have an interview idea you'd like to share with us message us on facebook at lacrosse local find out more about us at lacrosselocal.com and you can subscribe to the Lacrosse Local Podcast on your favorite podcast app. If you like us, rate us five stars. We appreciate it.